said the contactee that she first the beings that came to her were these uh, dreadlock black women from Andromeda that are more of the Amazon type, all right, and that they are actually represented in entertainment quite a bit. And that would be uh, uh, actually not just Wonder Woman, but when you look at things like Guinan on Star Trek The Next Generation, she still had the dreads. Okay, you've got Michonne on The Walking Dead, she's got the dreads. And if these, these black women show up occasionally uh, showing in our entertainment. So that's another deal there. You're saying that some of these beings are represented in our medias and our entertainment. So that would assume that there are some of us who are creating these medias that are aware of these individuals. Yes, that are aware of yeah, them. Absolutely. Uh, well, you know, you've got others like even the X-Men, you've got Storm and you've got these other melanin dominant females that are being seen on television right now quite a bit so i think that that's 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 representative of not just how we're seeing so much the equality of the feminine coming in right now Mm -hmm. but also also we're just seeing that that incorporation it's always been there you know even to where the dreadlock uh thing that i'm seeing uh they're they're trying to connect that to the predator in those movies how they have those dreadlocks so they're throwing it off by putting the insect insectoid reptilian face on it, but really they're supposed to represent these Andromedan women. Welcome Starseeds to the Cosmic Awakening. Let's dive into the 12 extraterrestrial races that your secret government reveals to you in plain sight. Centaurians race, humanoid, advanced, peaceful, explorers, Hindus race, spiritual, ancient, divine, cosmic, centaur race, horse-like, warrior, strong, fierce, Illyrians race, Mysterious, powerful, telepathic, evolved. Venusians race, beautiful, ethereal, enlightened, harmonious. Duanis race, peaceful, wise, highly advanced, ancient. Nabuians race, intelligent, tactical, resourceful, strategic. Telosians race, underground, ancient, intelligent, secretive. Yautja race, predator, hunter, strong, merciless. Xenomorph race, deadly, parasitic, adaptable, aggressive. Lalian's race, peaceful, wise, nurturing, cosmic. Herculoid race, powerful, resilient, defensive, fearless. Embrace the hidden truths of these races. The universe has much more to reveal. Stay open and awakened. Melchizedek in ancient Egypt was also known as Tehuti. Tehuti was considered a scribe. He was shown with the head of an ibis bird. And he also had what you call a quill or a pen in his hand. So this Melchizedek or Tehuti is here again, who has incarnated again. And in the Quran, he was known as Nebuchadnezzar or the green one, Melchizedek. As you can see, you know, the green aura around his being was known as the green one because originally, some of our deities, when they incarnated on the planet, they actually had green skin. So you see um, Osiris, right, who was related to vegetation, where his skin was green. You would see Ptah at times with green skin because we had the planet that we were originally from is that we, we, what we breathe, we breathe in more gold, more gold or gold dust was within the atmosphere right so it's like if when gold oxidizes what happens it turns green and you buy a green chain a gold chain here on the planet earth after a while if you don't clean it it starts to oxidize and it turns green and you start to clean it because at one time in our blood we had a, a perfect combination of magnesium iron zinc and copper within our blood that how come are we people of african descent have not concerned ourselves with finding out, well, what kind of people were these, our ancestors? We are dazzled by the pyramids, by the Sphinx, by all these fantastic temples, all the jewelry we see in the museums. But what about the lifestyle? So the point is that the time has come for us to get into what did our ancestors follow? What was their way of life? Well, We can say that it was what we would call a ma'atikrasi. It was a ma'atikratic order. What is ma'at? 
Mother's harmony, balance, order, reciprocity, justice, sobriety, propriety, decency, the right balance, the right weight, the right measure. All of those English terms it takes to describe what our ancestors followed, the ways of my art. A lot of people during this time is like, who am I, right? You are the new version of your ancestors. Everything that they knew, you know also, because they wisdom, they knowledge to get passed down through DNA. So whatever attributes that your ancestors had, you will have. You will reincarnate new versions of them. If they have resilience, you will have resilience. If they have bravery, you will have bravery. If they have wisdom, you will have wisdom, right? Everything that they had is, is passed down to you. If they had DNA of the gods, you would have DNA of the gods. You feel me? So envy is usually due to the DNA you have, right? And this avatar that you have, right? Because your ancestors came with many things because their DNA contained many things, right? Many extraterrestrial genes, many different type of genes that it contained, right? Many type of different abilities, right? So this is why indigenous and many other species is envied around the world or put down or this world is not predicated to them because due to DNA they know who you are. You feel me? You are still your ancestors. They are in your DNA. They in your genetics. To this day they are still with you and your genes. And you're like, why this system don't fit me? Because your genes is predicated towards nature. This is why nature call you. This is why the universe call you based on your DNA. Why is ancient Kemet so important to the world and to black people, African people in particular? Ancient Kemet is important because it's humankind's oldest civilization. It's the development of the best effort of a group of people to organize themselves. And for Africa, that's especially important since African people have been so defamed, even to the extent that some have said that African people had no civilization. In fact, African people developed the first civilization, which was Kemet. It is as important to African people as Greece is to European people. What did these Africans develop in the way of science? And well, of course, in the development of civilization, we would refer to Kemet as a high technical civilization. Uh, the sciences as we know them were well advanced in Kemet. Uh, thousands of years before they had that kind of development before. The art of writing, uh, astronomy, uh, the uh, mu music, any area that we now consider to be an important academic area already had its uh, beginning in Kemet and it was very well developed. The Egyptian is the knower of right knowledge, one who understands that the mystics do not operate of their own accord but through the divine essence of the deities. Their actions are extensions of the Neteru's will. Their words are the deity's words spoken through their tongues. Their sight is the vision of the Neteru seeing through their eyes. We were instructed to carry love in our hearts for one another, yet the human beast spreads hate. We were taught to show deep respect for all life on this planet, but instead they wage war. We were shown that our well-being is intrinsically tied to the life force of nature, the sun, the water, and the air. Our connection to Pa Netarat, the supreme beings, reflects our relationship with the natural world. We, as human beings, are spiritual energy, far more powerful than nuclear energy. This energy, when unified with the will of all people and in harmony with the spirit of nature, forms one body, one heart, and one mind devoted to peace. Building upon this understanding, we recognize that the earth, in all its natural majesty, serves as a bridge to the celestial realms, linking us to the divine forces. Every breath of air, drop of water, and ray of sunlight is a gift from the Neteru. And in return, our responsibility is to maintain the sacred balance. Our collective strength lies not only in unity among ourselves, but also in our bond with the cosmic order that guides all creation. All of these are the mysteries. That's why that eagle is there. That now is a landing point where the crafts go. Yeah, I'm already. I'm already. Now, that's the 
That don't mean you're gonna start staring around that Uber booth gonna do it. Because <laughs> you might get zapped by the Anunnaki. Because they see your light, not your body. They see whether or not you are sending off a positive, pure, green light, the essence of all life on this planet, or you sending out an animal light. So you better remember Independence Day, all them fools that got up on their roof, who thought just because they put on extraterrestrial costumes and say welcome, because they got zapped. Don't think you can't get zapped if you're out there, you know, around the devilish way and think they're going to take you with them. Oh, ain't nobody taking no drunkards, stuck and drunk over with them. So why should they take you back to risk so you can mess that round up? And bring your music and your loudness and your voiceless and your talk and your bad habits? Why should they? As Dr. York once said, you are a god when you compare yourself to everyone else on the planet. You are a supreme being. No other race on earth is as ancient as yours, and none possess the same level of melanin. You are the supreme of all beings. Now listen carefully. Don't let what they've done to your mind mislead you. When I say supreme being, don't just think in physical terms. And don't let your thoughts drift into some abstract spiritual concept. Supreme being means exactly that, a supreme existence. And when you look up the word being, you'll find it means existence. Existence has density, weight, and it occupies space. Are you following me? You are the supreme beings. Now, when are you going to look into that dictionary, God? The only one refusing to accept that responsibility is you, because you've been conditioned to place your trust in another man's hands, to put your life in another man's control. But the greatest fear is that you'll take control, gather your strength, stand up for what is right, and fight until you win. One success leads to another.